Oh, got skunky? The uh, part two of the Q&A. Got Instagram working now. If you watched the last Q&A, you know that uh, it ended up being so many questions that I split it into two videos. In the last video, I did most of the training questions. So this is gonna focus in on all the other questions. If you're new to the channel, the loudest per pound pup is Lotus and Hammy here is Enzo. I do these Q and A's periodically when Lotus, you know, schedule frees up, I guess. Let's get to the first ones here. No, no, no. I'm not afraid of you. 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 I'm a little bit afraid of him. That doom though, did you fix Enzo and Lotus? Yes. We did, around one, around, around a year. So generally you wanna wait till they're at least about a year. I would always ask your vet to be sure, but usually in that year to two year range is what most people seem to go with. Carly R, does Lotus's reactivity with other dogs affect you in any way? Does it upset you that he is the way he is? So it doesn't uh, upset me that he is the way he is, but it does affect, sure. Uh, in fact, I did an entire video on this question. Um, this might have been the question now that um, yeah, I was gonna say, you know, as I'm reading this question, I was like, wait, I think this is the question that inspired the video. I already answered this question. I dedicated a whole video to it. A couple videos back, you can check out, I'll link it. Mfray62766, does Enzo or Lotus chew or lick their paws excessively? My nine month old does, mainly her front paws. Lotus does. He does it as a, like a coping mechanism. Uh, Enzo rarely does. Uh, if Enzo is excessively licking a paw, I will check that Paul out. In fact, he was doing that recently. It turned out he had what was the early stages of an infection. But Lotus, I, I still can't not look sometimes, especially if he's like doing it to his fur, cause then it's like, well, make sure he doesn't have like a tick or something. Yeah, Lotus will do that as a coping mechanism. Naturally, Zemin, I'm sure I butcher all these usernames. Have you guys had problems with dominance power struggles between the boys? If you did any advice, our 16 month old German Shepherd and our 13 year old Pyrenees mix are butting heads and it's not any fun. Lotus will push his way in and, and do things and steal toys from Enzo. And there was a time when I was wondering like, wow, is Enzo just gonna be like a pushover or something? There was like a certain day where Enzo was like, okay, you're old enough now. And Enzo just stuck him in his place. And if you've seen him like running around the background, I was just doing a story time video, filming it. I don't know if it'll be up before this one. And you know, you see him in the back wrestle and stuff and Lotus will just flip over on his back and stuff for Enzo. So no, we really haven't had that issue. I don't really have good advice to give on that. The one thing I will say is even though Enzo is clearly the dominant one, no matter what's going on, if they get to be too much, if I feel like they're too, being too much, I will knock them down, tell them to knock it off. What are you doing? What are you doing with your paw? Why are you acting weird? Do you have something on you? That's more of an art than a science. You know, I hear them. Why does it take you three hours to shoot a 10 minute video? Unfortunately, I don't really have any good suggestions for this case scenario, other than obviously keeping an eye on them. Uh, this would probably be more of a question maybe for a trainer or something, I'm not sure. To Goat Ranch, do Enzo and Lotus display a natural herding instinct? Our German Shepherd, Maya's, uh, sorry loves herding and we've never taught her anything about herding. She herds people, kids, our two goats, our chickens, pretty much anything. Yeah, I mean, shepherds are, that's what they were bred to do was to herd. You know, that's why they're called shepherds. They do it all the time. If little kids are running around, if people, yeah, I mean, they herd everything. That's just what they do. Uh, let's see from Joel Six Sanchez. How safe is it to have a German shepherd in your, I'm assuming that was a autocorrect issue, in your home, I think is what that meant to say, while your wife is pregnant at the same time. I don't see why that would be any issue. I can't speak from experience, but anything I've ever read or heard about it is good. They tend to just be more protective and more hang around the pregnant wife and everything. I don't see why that would be an issue, to be honest. From what I've read, houses that have dogs, the kids tend to grow up healthier because dogs are bringing in dirt and bacteria and stuff, so it just helps build the immune system. Dark Fairy 3 do you have any plans on trying to do any long road trips with Lotus now that he's getting better with riding in the pup truck? Sort of. So, sort of. Kinda. 
I am trying to make plans. I would like to do some longer trips with them. I will say like today, for example, it, it's been raining all day, but there was like a four hour gap according to the weather app. <laughs> and I was like, that's fine. So I got, I was like, okay, I got enough time to shower and everything at least before we go. I get them loaded up in the FJ. Is that thunder? I pull up the app and it still says the same thing. And then like I'm sitting there for a second and then it just does its whole reload thing and it's like thunderstorms clear across the board. Literally already loaded up, fastened in and everything. I was like, we're just gonna hope for the best. If we get rained on, I don't care. I don't wanna be out in a thunderstorm. We drove east to get out of it and Lotus was just kind of like, meh, he's okay. He's just laying back there. I mean, the Zanny has been doing wonders for him. So I definitely feel more comfortable doing a longer trip. Much, much later. I'll probably cut out most of this answer, but that's kind of where my head's at with that. So I wouldn't say I have plans, but I'm working on plans. That should have been the short answer. Five seconds. Greta underscore Dean 35. In a few of your videos, you mentioned a spray you use to prevent fleas and ticks. Does it also help repel other bugs? We have a bumper crop of mosquitoes this year and they get my dog's faces and belly and me quite a bit. And it's difficult to find something I can put on her. I can't say for certain, maybe. I need to look in that anyways, because where we've been doing so many more hikes this summer, I've just gotten eaten up. It's like ridiculous. So that is actually something I've been wondering about. I do think so. I think like, it's not necessarily like a repellent, but I haven't noticed any bites or anything. And you know, mosquito bites itch and stuff. And I would notice if they were doing something like that. Neither one of them is. I haven't noticed any, so I'm inclined to say possibly. The spray is linked below. I can't say for certain. Chant the German Shepherd, do Enzo and Lotus stay out of the crate when you are at work? Any tips on recommendations would be greatly appreciated. So yes, they do stay out of their crates. In fact, I have a phenomenal story time coming. It might actually be out before this. I'm not sure because I'm currently editing it. A lot of these Q&A videos I will edit pretty quick and get up. So this might come out before, but if not, I will link it. Great story time of Enzo not being in his crate and getting into stuff. As far as tips, I can tell you some of the things we do is we block the stairs because I just don't want them going up and down the stairs. I take that back. I'm actually perfectly fine with Lotus being upstairs. I don't trust Enzo upstairs because he can, if his FOMO kicks in. Also, I just don't like the idea of them going up and down the stairs for safety reasons. So I do block that. I lock and deadbolt the door. I do type the trash can. Most of this is all just for Enzo and 99% of the time he's fine. But when he gets that weird moment where he's going to FOMO and separation anxiety kick in, that's when I worry the most. I would suggest maybe cameras. You can, I've got them linked below. You can get like wise cameras pretty cheap and you can check in on your pups. I feel much better knowing that. And that was super helpful, especially when like Lotus was a puppy. We didn't have him when Enzo was a pup. I have some footage when he was a pup because I would just like set up the GoPro and leave it. But obviously I couldn't monitor that while we were gone. But like I have, like when Lotus was a puppy, I would watching him on his crate and he actually got out. So like that was helpful because I was like, oh my gosh. So like Enzo and I hurried and came back home. That was the one time I've talked through the camera because I don't like doing that. I don't like that idea because that could confuse them. But that was the one time I talked in the camera because I kept yelling for him to get him to come back downstairs because he kept going up the stairs trying to get him to stay down there looking for me. Mostly potty trained, I think, but maybe not like 100%. So like I had a lot of concerns. <laughs> with him being out and about then. Kim underscore Lopez, does Riley have a favorite Enzo or Lotus? Does she show preferential treatment? I think she maybe trusts Enzo a little bit more cause I do, she does tend to like walk up to him more and rub up against him and stuff where Lotus was a little rambunctious as a pup. She's had to swipe him a few times. Not that she hasn't swiped Enzo a few times, but I would definitely say she is more trusting of Enzo. All I did was switch the battery. Everybody was being nice and quiet. Jeez. Michelle Meadows, 18. How is Rally Cat's ears? Allergies, you mentioned a few vlogs back that you were taking Enzo to the vet about his paw. Update on Lotus and the Zanny. Wow, lots of questions. Glad to see that everybody looks healthy and happy in the latest vlogs. Hope all is well in the Sanders household, O-H-I-O. Uh, so yeah, we do have some vlogs coming up that will kind of address a lot of those questions, but uh, the short version is Riley's doing well. Definitely seems to be allergies. Xanax, Zanny. as I was talking about a minute ago, still doing well. And Enzo's paw, not fully healed, but we're getting some progress. We've had some weird kind of possible side effects. We're not sure, which I'll talk about in the vlog, but otherwise we're doing okay. XX Shorte, were your dogs ever reactive to kids? My 10 month German Shepherd is very reactive toward kids, but will do anything to protect my five-year-old son. I wouldn't say reactive, but Lotus is reactive to everything. 
people, dogs and stuff. We have a, we have a couple, got fishy breath. We do have a couple neighbor kids next door and Lotus is reactive to them too. So not completely unheard of. Wow. Oh, thanks. Yeah. You need Tic Tac. You need Tic Tic Tac. Bubble gum maybe. Yeah. Little mouthwash. Slip a little mouthwash in that food. Uh, from Handsome Man Nova, did you ever think about getting Enzo or Lotus into protection work? Uh, no, uh, we did give some consideration into therapy work for Enzo, which, you know, could happen someday, but that was more when Nisha was teaching. She's not teaching, or at least not teaching in schools anymore. Also from the same person, my dog has a reaction to flea and tick. My dog had a reaction to flea and tick medication. Is there any other preventative that you know of that is safe? So that is precisely why we do not use flea and tech preventatives. Now, what we use is a spray, which I'll link down below in the Amazon store. We've only been using it this summer, but since I started using it, knock on wood, haven't had any ticks, fleas. So, I mean, we're not living in the woods, but we go on hikes several times a week. So, so far so good. Rachel Reloaded, in the videos, you show Enzo bark when leaving him in the car. Does he calm down when you are out of sight? Does he bark at other people that walk by your car? We have a 10 month old and she goes crazy anytime I take her places, she will bark and shake the entire rig, hoping she will outgrow this or if I will keep taking her out, she will learn it's okay to calm down. It's so frustrating because I want to take her out more, but can't even go through a drive through because she is so loud. Yes, generally speaking, Enzo will stop barking once he is confident I can't hear him anymore is basically what I've come to realize. Uh, if he thinks there's any chance that I can still hear him, he will keep barking. It is rare that once I'm out of sight, I've done some testing with this, it's rare that he will bark once I'm out of sight. You know, I, I like showing those in the vlogs because I just think it's funny, but I will say that I can tell him the off command and he won't bark. So there are those situations where it's not so great. He, now when I leave the car and he barks, that's something he's always done. That's his separation anxiety. When like we're in a drive-thru, Chick-fil-A is notorious for this because they always have their employees outside taking orders. If I'm not, if I forget to tell him off or something, he will bark at an employee sometimes that walks by. That is a learned behavior from Lotus barking at people and things. So that is something that I've been working on with him because I don't like that. One thing when he barks because he's mad that I'm leaving, I'm okay with him expressing that as long as when I tell him not to, he doesn't. The way I'm able to do that though is he is trained. So I would definitely look into training. He's taking his frustrations out on Skunky. I wouldn't say though that it's necessarily gonna be something they're gonna grow out of. It's really gonna be something you need to work on them with training, probably start working on that now. The Legend of Ali. I was wondering how well Enzo adjusted to bringing in Lotus for the first time. Did you have any jealousy issues in the beginning? How long did the adjustment period take if there was one? <sighs> yes, we're still in the adjustment period. We have an almost one year old looking to get a second in five months as he is really needed, as he really needs someone to play with. Thanks so much for the very informative videos. Love them all. Well, you are welcome and um, I don't know if there was really an adjustment period. Enzo's really chill in that regard. You know, he has his separation anxiety issues, but that aside, he's super chill, which is why we were considering therapy for a long time. He is very abnormal for a shepherd in that regard. I wouldn't say there really was too much of like a jealousy issue. Now, I take it back. There is, there are times where he will show extreme, even to this day, things of jealousy. He knows his name. He knows his name is not Lotus. For example, if we're out working on some training, I can actually say Lotus come or Lotus, you know, whatever. And Enzo will ignore me. Yet, if we're in the house and I'm like, hey Lotus, come here and let me give you some attention. Suddenly Enzo's like, oh, did you call for me? Like, let me get up here. And he's like getting all in the attention and stuff. Also, he has a notorious habit. This was more when Nisha was teaching, uh, you know, pre-COVID because she would leave every day and stuff. She would come home at the same time. He has a notorious habit of when she would come home, Lotus is going all crazy like normal, he would go get a toy and start squeaking it obsessively. And as soon as Lotus came to check it out, he would just drop it. So Lotus would go after the toy and then he would just come wagging tail, smiling like, oh, now I get all of mom's attention. So he definitely picked up some traits there are some little things like that. And then we never let him up on the bed or the furniture at all. And that was something we started doing later. And to this day, he's kind of like 
mm, like he likes it, but sometimes he's like, nah, I'd rather just lay in my bed. He really, like when we got Lotus, suddenly he was like, oh no, I need to get up here and get some cuddles too. So like there were little signs, but like nothing too crazy. Jaber, Wheezy, how did you teach recall in high stimulation environments like with squirrels and animals? Again, this is another training question that I would have loved to have been able to put in with the training video, but Instagram wasn't working. So that comes with a lot of practice. So. Like I said, you can go through a training program like Off Leash or like through Roberts. You can learn recall. Recall is not that hard necessarily to teach. Uh, it does bother me when I see people say like, oh, my dog knows perfect recall. It's like, do they? Do they because you're, you're in an empty field and you recalled them? Like that doesn't mean anything. Uh, yeah, the way you learn things like to recall when there's birds or a squirrel or something is through lots and lots of practice, yeah. When Lotus first learned recall, if I would've taken him out, I mean, you've seen some of the videos where there's a squirrel or a deer or birds and I recall him and he stops like dead in his tracks and he's like, or he just doesn't go get them. Sometimes I'll tell him before. He doesn't usually like see a squirrel or a deer and like take off immediately when we're out on the trails. A lot of times it's like he'll hear it and he'll stop and he'll look. And when he does that, if I don't want, he'll kind of pause for a second. Sometimes he'll even like look at me and I'll either say like, okay, or off. And if I say, okay, then he's gone. If I say off, then he's like, mm, okay, no way. But even if he does start to go after it and I don't want him to, all I have to do is tell him to come and he will. The one thing that I make the mistake sometimes is I don't yell it loud enough. Sometimes I feel like I, love, I yell it so loud though that I scare people. So that's kind of a, because people hear you scream and come to your dog. They think, oh my gosh, they're running away. They're not listening. When really it's just, they're running really fast with their ears not facing you. So I'm just trying to yell loud enough for them to hear me. I've kind of gone off topic here, but it's just a lot of practice. Lots, of, I mean, you see the videos we go to the parks and the hikes like every single day. So it's just lots and lots and lots of practice. Dalio Frenito, does Rally ever initiate play with the pups? Nah, not real, not play. She will kind of like go up around them. I'll see if I can find a little camera clip where she was like messing with Enzo. Uh, she will take swipes at Lotus, but I wouldn't say she initiates play. Oh, let's see from Stephanie Rajkovic. Sorry, Stephanie, I'm sure that's not correct. How did you get the pups to be so polite around the cat? My four month old German Shepherd just wants to play with ours all the time and the cat is just not that into it. So I do have a couple cat videos. I'll try to link below. Or if you just go to this channel and search cat, slowly introducing them and never, ever, ever let, our, let them be together without our supervision. And even to this day, I still keep a close eye you know, it kind of depends on the mood. Like, you know your shepherd. Now, I mean, yours is four months old. So they're, they're at that age, you need to be watching them like a hawk, no matter what. But like at this age, if they're like this, where they're just kind of laying around and stuff and they get up and rally, say, whatever, I'm barely gonna pay, pay any attention at all. But if they're like all hyped up and stuff and like how, like earlier when they're playing with the toys and stuff and rally comes by, that's when I'm gonna pay way more attention because one, they could just accidentally hurt her and you know, they're getting all excited, they're barking, they're jumping around and stuff. She could take that as an aggression and, and like swipe back to protect herself. You know, just to kind of remind them like, hey, I'm here. So I'm very cognizant of that to this day. Um, but I would definitely watch the video that I did where I talk in detail about how we introduce them. Call me Chunga. Do you think you'd ever get another breed other than a German Shepherd? Uh, not at this time, no. Sirius Knox Black, most shepherds bind with one human over others. Does Enzo and Lotus have a favorite? I wouldn't say they have a favorite. Uh, Enzo is definitely like, depends on his mood. Like if Enzo's all ready to go and bundles of energy, he wants to be around me because he knows I'm, gonna, I'm the one that's gonna do something. If he's like wanting to rest and relax, he wants to be around wifey because she's better at that where I tend to not sit still as much. And uh, Lotus is definitely a homebody loves to be hang out. He could just Netflix and chill with wifey all day and he'd be perfectly content. Just got up to check the battery level, realized that when I swapped the battery, for some reason it reset the picture profile. So yeah, probably saw some weird colorations for a while possibly. Let's see, uh, need Annette, Ivan, and Tiven? I don't know. My rescued German Shepherd is bonded to me, female, and hates men. She was eight years old at rescue and her situation was bad. After five years, she still barks with my husband but can be introduced to other 
men at the park or on a walk? Any suggestions to get her to not be so reactive to my husband? You know, I don't know, I don't have a good answer for that. I mean, five years and still not okay with your husband who lives in the same house? I don't know, I would probably talk to a trainer at that point. I honestly don't know. I'm just literally guessing off the top of my head, but I mean, it could be something as simple as, maybe your husband wears the same deodorant as whoever that bad experience was or something. Like, I don't know, like that's how, subtle. I mean, think about trauma from a human perspective, you know, how little things could set you off. Dogs aren't that different in that regard. So I would maybe talk to a trainer though, and just see if they've got any suggestions. Danny GH, how much and what do you feed them both a day? I have an entire video on the food process that I'll link. Short version is it varies based on age. I think right now we're doing about five, six cups for Enzo and about four or five for Lotus. I do mix in some pumpkin puree for both of them and then obviously their supplements and everything. FW Trucker, first of all, I love the videos, thank you. We have a nine month old male German Shepherd. Just wondering if you feed your dogs meat as well as kibbles or one or the other. We do kibble with a little bit of puree, pumpkin that I was just saying. There is a lot of debate on which is better, raw or kibble. I don't think science has figured out the answer because frankly, I don't think science has figured out the perfect human diet. That being said, the one thing that I do seem to see over and over and over again is if you're gonna feed raw, feed raw. If you're gonna feed kibble, feed kibble. Probably shouldn't mix and match. That's about the only thing that I feel comfortable suggesting. If you wanna know what kind of food and stuff we feed, all that's linked below and I'll, again, I'll link that food video. You know, comfy with skunky. Yeah. Nobody's talking to you, Ham. You gonna go upside down. Yeah. And with that, that's gonna do it for this edition of Q&A. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. It does help out the channel and help out the pups. I'll link everything we use below. If you go through the pups links, it doesn't change your prices at all on Amazon, but the pups do get a little bit of commission. So I appreciate that any way that you guys can help us. Otherwise, appreciate you guys as always. And we'll see you on the next one. We'll see you on the next one. Later.